We begin our journey here, in an isolated and vulnerable world of extremes. In many ways, this is the perfect place to investigate the future health of our planet. A future conditional on how we cope with the spread of toxic pollution. The Arctic is a place dominated by the rhythms of nature and the seasonal patterns of migration. It's a place of deep fjords teeming with life and remote fishing villages governed by the endless cycle of strong tidal currents. Ihaluit is a remote village in northeastern Canada, about 90 miles south of the Arctic Circle. Most of the 5,000 people who live here are Inuit, a nomadic people that migrated across a land bridge from Asia more than 4,000 years ago. Though this is a community that has clearly entered the 21st century, rush hour traffic has never really been an issue. In fact, the Haluit has less than 10 miles of roads. The only way in or out of town is by plane or boat. Ihaluit is surrounded by a long arm of the North Atlantic and treeless green carpets of tundra covered with the delicate flowers of summer. However, the image that most people have of the polar region, of a pristine, unspoiled wilderness, is far from accurate. The Arctic, which has very few sources of industrial pollution, is turning into a toxic sink. 500 miles south of Ihaluit is a small settlement of only 600 people. Yet it's the home of the region's first trace metal analytical laboratory. This is where biologists, using highly sophisticated instruments, study nearly 1,000 animal specimens each year. Incredibly, they show rising levels of the world's most hazardous chemicals, DDT, PCBs, dioxins, and mercury. Michael Kwan is the lab's chief toxicologist. Mercury levels in the Arctic environment in general is, uh, is increasing. And um, so it is very important for us to closely monitor anything that people eat, fish, marine mammals, caribou, anything that's uh, consumed by uh, local Inuits. But where do these chemicals come from? And how did they get here? In a phenomenon scientists call the grasshopper effect, toxic pollutants released thousands of miles to the south evaporate in the warm climate, then ride the winds until they reach the cold air of the Arctic, where they eventually fall to the earth. It doesn't take long for the caribou to feed upon the tainted moss and shrubs of the tundra. And in the sea, fish feed upon toxic plankton, which are then eaten by seals and polar bears. Polar bears are showing up with levels in their fat of certain toxic pollutants that would qualify them for burial in a hazardous waste site. Now those polar bears don't work in factories, but what they do is they're at the top of the food chain, right now full of a lot of hazardous materials. This is clearly a cause for concern, 